All right, children, welcome back to history class. Good. And behind me here, you see a map from the 19th century. And can any one of you point out where Poland is? No? Exactly. Poland at that point did not exist as a sovereign nation. It was partitioned at the end of the 18th century. How did that happen? How did Poland disappear from the map? That's what you're gonna find out today. And welcome back regular viewers. Oh, and if you're new, welcome to my channel History Hustler. I'm Stefan, I'm a history teacher from the Netherlands and I'm hustling history for you. And if you like this content, please consider subscribing. Do hit that notification bell to join the hustle. Let's start. To understand how the partitions have taken place, we need to go back to the end of the 16th century because then the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was established in the city of Lublin. Over the course of the 17th century, the Commonwealth fought wars against the Swedes, the Russians and the Ottomans. In 1648, a major Cossack rebellion, the Chelnitschki Uprising, took place, which weakened the Commonwealth. Further decline took place over the course of the 18th century. Now, if you ask historians why the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth came to an end, most of them will argue it was about Liberium Veto. The Liberian veto was introduced in the mid 17th century. It basically meant that whenever somebody in the Polish Lithuanian parliament the same shouted Sisto Activitatum or Ni Pozwalam, the legislation would be nullified. The goal was to create unanimity during the voting sessions. But in reality, it made coming to a decision into a long, winded process. Not to mention the fact that foreign powers bribed members of the parliaments for their own goals. In 1732, the Treaty of Berlin was signed between Prussia, Russia and Austria. The treaty is also known as the Treaty of the Three Black Eagles since each country had a black eagle in their coat of arms. The treaty concerned the succession of the Polish king. Now I will not dive too deep into the details of this treaty but if you have some additional information leave it down below. Where it all came down to was that the three superpowers wanted to keep the Commonwealth weak. Russia gained more and more influence in the Commonwealth politics and this led to the Bar Confederation in 1768, which eventually kicked off the first partition. The Bar Confederation was a secessionist movement that was created by Polish noblemen that wanted to resist Russian influence. They held out in two parts of the Commonwealth, but were not able to get foreign alliances. Even they alienated their own king. And thus, Russian, Russian and Austrian troops marched into the Commonwealth. And because of the turmoil of the Confederation, no resistance was offered against these foreign troops. And thus, the first Polish partition was a pact. Prussia took most of Royal Prussia without Danzig, Ermland, northern areas of Greater Poland along the Notech River and parts of Kuyavia. Austria took the salt mines of Bohnia and Bilicka. Zator and Auschwitz, or Auschwitz, part of Lesser Poland, gaining parts of the countries of Kraków and Sandomir and the whole of Galicia. Russia took a section of Livonia and of Belarus, gaining the counties of Lubetsk, Polotsk and Metislavo. The Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth lost almost one-third of its territory and a total of four million people who now came to live under Russian, Prussian or Austrian rule. Now note here that not all these people were ethnically Polish since the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was an ethnically diverse state. King Stanislav August Poniatowski, he was out to get rid of the Liberian veto that had hindered the Commonwealth politics for so long. He was also inspired by the French Revolution. This led to a counter movement named the Targowica Confederation, which consisted of Polish Lithuanian magnates who were against this and they were also backed by Russia. It led to a short war between Poland and Russia in 1792, where the Russians proclaimed victory. This war is also known as the War in Defense of the Constitution. Either way, the second Polish partition now occurred. 
The Russians grabbed a large chunk of territory from the east and also the Prussians grabbed some land from the west, South Prussia and Posen. The Commonwealth had shrunk to one third of its original shape, but was still existing, although not for long. In the year 1794, the Kostrusko uprising began. It was led by Polish military leader Tadeusz Kostrusko and he led an army of patriotic farmers armed with pitchforks and even for that time it was an outdated piece of weaponry. Now initially they were successful and defeated the Russians at the Battle of Bratsavice, however the Russians proved to be too strong and therefore the armies of Kostrusko had to surrender. In 1795 Prussia, Russia and Austria signed a treaty in which they decided to carve up the remaining part of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. The Russian part included Vilnius, the Prussian part New East Prussia and New Silesia and Warsaw and the Austrians gained Lublin and Krakow. King Stanislaw August Poniatowski had to abdicate and he would die in exile in St. Petersburg in 1798. Kostrusko he fled Poland and he went to the United States. After this he traveled to revolutionary France where he would take part in the pro-French Polish Legion. Now these armies would conquer the former territories of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth and in 1807 the Duchy of Warsaw was established. This was not an independent Polish state. No, it was a pro-French vassal state. After Napoleon's defeat, the state got disbanded and most of the territories of the Duchy of Warsaw be incorporated into the Russian Empire. Now, Some people called the Vienna Congress the fourth Polish partition. Other people argue that the fourth Polish partition was after the German Soviet invasion of 1939. Either way, since the end of Napoleon, an independent state would not exist until 1918. Next video I will talk about the Russification and Germanization of the Polish territories. Subscribe and ring that bell so you will be notified. Now I covered a fairly big topic in a fairly short video. I know I have a lot of Polish viewers, WGN, so if you feel something is being left out, leave a comment down below. I would really appreciate that. If you want to know more about the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, you can click right here. If you want to know more about Poland after 1918, you can click right here. Thanks to my patrons and especially the president, Kulin Castleman and Henry Clarkson. Thank you guys for your support. Be like them and support me in my hustling of history. Don't forget to subscribe. I already said that. See you later.